After being in the vehicle for uh, five days, five and a half days of driving, uh, I knew the night before that we'd be riding uh, Highway 6 uh, from Johnson Crossing. And everybody was excited that we were going to be able to ride. And there was uh, three guys that couldn't ride because of their sleds being broke down. So it ended up there was only six of us that actually made the ride. After being paid a visit from man's best friend, it seems like an omen that we were finally about to be on the trail. Five and a half days in a truck without being on a snowmobile, it was time. One of the best parts of the trip has been the wildlife. Just about everywhere you look, you can see something. This lynx really didn't mind sharing the road with us, as long as you were 10 yards or so away. Well, let's get back to snowmobiling. It promises to be an intriguing day. We've been uh, trailering for quite a while to get up here. We're in the Yukon Territory now. I'm looking forward to it. 140 miles, I can do it standing up. Five and a half days off, feels good. Oh, this is beautiful country up here. It's gorgeous, I would love to eh, maybe even think about moving up here. Hopefully lots of snow and maybe a few moose, maybe a buffalo, I don't know. Hopefully something. That's why I'm here. I didn't come to trailer. I understand you have to do what you have to do, but I think there was a few days that we could have been riding that we trailered, but so be it. We're having a good time, and it's a great adventure. They call us, they call us twins, alike. but we're not twins. really twins, because he's shorter than I am. Well, it's a good looking one. <laughs> a good looking one, Good looking one's hand. over there. <laughs> what are you doing over there, Wes? Hey, Wes, he's studying trail conditions. <laughs> <laughs> After five and a half days in the truck with these guys, it's be great be on the trail. I think I'll probably just grow right off all by myself. Maybe I'll come back, maybe I won't. The anticipation level of all was high, and everyone was ready to have a wonderful ride through part of the Canadian Yukon. Group 1 had traveled this path four days ago and had some problems with the trail not being recently opened up and had to call in for a rescue crew from Ross River. They were less than 20 miles from completing the 150-mile trip. We left Johnson Crossing at 10 in the morning. The first 90 miles was easy. I will say easy. The trail was easy to find. Group 2 had ridden this two days ago and easily completed the trek through the Pelly Pass in less than seven hours. We expected to arrive about 4 or 5 p.m., well before dark, and for once arriving in time for a good meal and relaxation. From what we were told, it was supposed to be a great adventure, which it turned out to be. Oh, the beauty of it was just all mountains all around you, and there was not a quarter mile that was straight. It was all turns up and down, and you never had a straight shot at anything. Nice of it to start snowing, although you can't see all that mountain. Yeah. It smoothed out, smoothed out after a while. A little rough there at first. But, uh, I don't know, we've got uh, another 40 miles to go, 50 miles, something like that. We'll make it, make it before dark. Haven't seen no animals, but we've got a lot of snow. Yeah, it's really nice to get back on the trail. Well, this trail is pretty good. It sure as hell is better than the truck. and it's scenic and nice and it's even snowing. I can't remember the last time it snowed. I think it snowed a little bit in Minnesota. I don't remember seeing any snow from Minnesota on. But here it is. A Little bit uh, worried right now. We're missing one. He was right there with us at the last stop, which was only what, a mile ago? Well, other than that, it's a gorgeous day for a ride. We got a little snow finally, fresh stuff. Plenty on this trail, the trail's not too bad. But then after that, it started to snow really bad. And it was a, a sleet type snow, you could hear it hitting your helmet. As one can imagine, there is not a lot of traffic on the trails in the Yukon. We paid little attention to the warning signs that close this road during the winter for sled traffic only. 
None of us had ever come close to needing a rescue in our snowmobile careers. The first 50 miles was perfect sledding. As the light snow accumulated, it gave us a fresh look at the trail. Thanks, Steve. In addition to the personal emergency survival gear, a few of us had the new spot emergency messaging and real-time tracking device. Anyone could follow our real-time progress on a computer. The Spot Messenger unit also has a couple of emergency transponders that can be activated. After we'd been stuck many times, probably over a two-hour period, and everybody was getting tired, um, I went back and I talked to Video Mike and I asked him what he thought, and he thought that uh, he'd already pushed the button on our spot for help. People are getting stuck a lot. And my sat phone was on my sled and my sled was probably 50 feet off the trail on top of a bush where I had gotten stuck. And I trudged back there and I pushed the button on mine and I got the sat phone out and I dialed it and I got a hold of Jeremy at the command center and I told him what our situation was and he got a hold of uh, Pete Patella in Dawson. In turn, they got a hold of the people in Ross River and that we needed help. And he called me back on a sat phone saying that the people in Ross River didn't think it was that bad, that we should be able to make it. And I told, explained to him that they didn't know the situation out there, how bad it was and how bad it was snowing and that we couldn't see anything any of the trail and we didn't know exactly which way to go eight six seven nine six nine two satellite phones were part of every group with mishkanska and part of our safety measures and at that point yep. they decided yes, that they would he, the send man. bob and doug out so to I'll get go. us the trail problems really come from the fact that there is only a packed path wide enough for one sled to travel. Either side of the 44-inch traveled path, there is about three feet of sugar snow, a very loose, unpackable snow waiting for us like a trap. The previously packed down tracks had vanished with the day's new snowfall. It never felt like it was a hopeless situation to me. It just was a lot of work. And we knew after we got into the ride for a little bit, after what had happened, we knew it was going to be a continuation of the same thing. So we tried our best not to get stuck, but not being able to figure out where the trail was, there were, you knew it was going to happen. The guys that were in the lead did the best job that they could, but without being able to see any type of marking of any kind, it was just a guess as to where the trail was. You should have gloves on. Okay, now, they are starting to drop off the trail again. Yep. Yeah, you've, got a, you've got to hammer it and, and ride right back up on it. I know. Okay. I know what they're going to do. All of you. I can't say that I'm not going to drop off and get in. Whenever you see that my skis went off and got deep, I'm going to have hammered to get back up on top of the trail. That's the only way you can ride these things. So you can't pussyfoot. If you start dropping a ski in, you gotta hit it to get back up on the trail. No one was really prepared for or expected conditions like this. This was turning into one of those reality survival TV shows pretty quickly. We're 89 miles from where we started this morning. Yes, and we're at we're at the upper sheep creek. Is it? We're right there at the crossing. Yeah, right now, right now we're uh, we go we went about uh, what an hour. We went about a mile in the last hour. Okay. 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 Bye. They are on their way. I've been out by Manitowage. We got stuck in the in the trail that hadn't been opened yet, and uh, we made it out. But uh, it was the luck of the I don't want to say the Irish, 
I think somebody was looking over us, the snow god or something was looking over us that night. That's the only other time, and that was dark that night. So, I don't know if we just keep plodging along. Every time we move, we get stuck. Never. You get one sled on stuck, another one stuck. I can't count the time until we dug sleds out. You don't want to slip off and go down in there. No, no, no. Never no, would no. get out. Can't keep digging sleds out. Huh? How long ago did they start? Sleds out and go five feet, dig you know, sled out again. When we were, before we got my sled out back there. So that's, that's a half an hour? Half an hour. must be right on the edge here, huh? Right, you're right there's in the hole. Right there. There's a the hole right there. Yep. No, no leeway. What I mean is it is it gonna is it gonna put us up with a four foot, five foot wide track? We're gonna have to walk a path and then follow that, right? Yeah. I don't know what it's gonna be when we get up to that. According to Pete Patel, we got probably another ten miles of this stuff. Yeah. And I don't mean with Wes, who is one of our strongest, now with a back injury from pulling on sleds, and everyone just exhausted to the point of collapse, our drinking water nearly gone, we had to dig in, regroup, and think about the 60 miles to go. A very dismal feeling being in the Canadian Yukon wild as the night crept in on us. I have never been in this kind of problem before. I rode deep snow, but not like this. Sled's supposed to go over top of snow. Is that water drinkable? Yes. Here, yeah. we got to dig Dave out and try to go up a little bit. I wouldn't try to go up that hill. I should be coming from that way. How about if I walk ahead? Dave already hit. He walked ahead. Did he? As dusk fell, a couple of the guys walked the hill to see if there was a better place to stay until a rescue could get to us. With the path up the hill now walked and the uncomfortable cold and darkness taking over, we decided to slowly keep moving forward. Yeah, I don't know if them guys are... They're up around the corner. <laughs> 